Hello, I'm Scott Thuman in for Cheryl Atkinson. Welcome to Full Measure. Russia is remaking an old foreign policy standard to fit its new image. Vladimir Putin is speaking boldly and carrying a big stick. Twice this week, he showcased a military not just pulled from the mothballs, but refitted with restored pride and taking action in critical conflicts around the globe. Russia is rising, and so is the risk that a face-off may turn into a firefight. In Red Square this week, Russia's military might was on full display. A parade celebrating the victories of World War II and with haunting flashbacks of the former Soviet superpower. But the focus very much on the future, the Russians boasting of a busy year of building 2,000 new armored vehicles, 400 high-tech aircraft, and 60 ships and submarines. Наши солдаты и командиры доказали, что они достойные преемники героев Великой Отечественной. The hardware is hardly sitting on the sidelines. Those are Russian fighter jets coming within 30 feet of the USS Donald Cook last month while on patrol in the Baltic Sea. A Russian pilots also accused of coming within 50 Hello, feet of a U.S. Line. aircraft and another Hello, reportedly line. performed a dangerous barrel roll right over a U.S. surveillance plane. Evelyn Farkas was one of the Pentagon's top advisors on Russia. Are these meant as messages from Vladimir Putin to the rest of the world? Yeah, absolutely. They're messages to the rest of the world. They're messages to his people. But they're really dangerous. I mean, this isn't funny. You know, that's putting Russian pilots in danger. That's putting, obviously, U.S. personnel in danger. And it's, and it's really risky because who knows what kind of follow-on actions might occur. We condemn this kind of behavior. And under the rules of engagement, uh, that could have been a shoot-down. Farkas now works with the Atlantic Council, a think tank that advises on issues that impact NATO countries. Would you say that we underestimated Vladimir Putin's goals and aspirations? I don't know if we underestimated them. I just don't think we fully understood them. And, and maybe we weren't paying enough attention. And just as Russian troops made their way into Ukraine, fears have also spread to here in Estonia and the other Baltic nations that are a thin buffer between an increasingly belligerent Russia and the rest of Western Europe. Estonians broke free of the Soviet Union 25 years ago, but the influences are still strong. And so are some concerns that Putin might one day tried to rule these lands again. We drove 60 miles from Tallinn toward the Russian border past a series of checkpoints and stern-looking soldiers in full fatigues and saw what's called the European Reassurance Initiative, a sort of circling of the wagons by U.S. and NATO forces. That's the biggest thing, is assuring the alliance. We want the Estonians to know that if push comes to shove, we're, we're here for them 100 um, percent. And that's the message we're getting at, is if you call, we're going to come. What you're seeing here may just be a taste of what's to come. The Pentagon says it would like to quadruple these resources closer to the Russian border, sending what it says are its best and most modern men and equipment. NATO just went live with its missile defense systems in Romania and for the very first time flew F-22 Raptors, some of the most advanced warplanes around, another loud indicator of readiness. Russia calls the moves a provocation and threat. As a result, media in Moscow say Putin is deploying two new divisions in the West, another in the South, to counter NATO's. When Putin looks West, he, it's necessary that he sees NATO, not individual countries. So the increased presence is very important, I think. Eric Enlow of the Baltic News Service has long been covering these chess moves. He says it's more dangerous than just a staring contest. The concern is that uh, Russia might miscalculate, might miscalculate and try to uh, give NATO a, uh, a blow here because, uh, you know, as the, the NATO, NATO's eastern wing is not so well protected and that's also the reason why we welcome uh, increased allied presence here. Oh, oh, oh. 
Critics say Russia has already pushed too many literal boundaries, like in Syria, where under the guise of fighting ISIS, Putin is really working to defend his ally and U.S. enemy Bashar al-Assad. The day after that massive display in Moscow, Putin was touting Russia's military successes in Syria, claiming Russian warplanes have flown more than 10,000 combat missions since the air campaign began on September 30th and claims the strikes have allowed the Syrian military to drive militants from 500 towns and villages. Veteran war correspondent Janine Di Giovanni spent years inside Syria and speaks of the horrific side effects of Russian intervention in her recent book, The Morning They Came For Us. Putin does have a huge influence. Um, Definitely, there is. Um, he's put his mark on on Syria. Um, Aleppo, the bombing of Aleppo, the destruction of Aleppo. Uh, Putin is responsible for a lot of this since the campaign started. She contends Russia's attacks on Assad's opponents is further destabilizing the region and worsening the refugee crisis that is panicking all of Europe. Another reason to wonder what Russia may do next in putting this new firepower to use. And that's maybe kind of the bottom line here is that Russia is a geopolitical presence. You, it's never going to go away. There's no decline and then they go away. And, and I think that's a mistake that the world makes if they ignore Russia. Farkas points out that Putin doesn't just pose problems and was seen as a cooperative partner in the Iran nuclear deal, adding there is room for reasoning, but how much no one exactly knows. Still ahead on full measure, the dangers crossing between Mexico and the U.S. Many on that illegal passage never make it. We visit one place where they try to put a name to the missing.